I was a Kickstarter backer for Oculus Rift, and of course I've pre-ordered Vive. And the thing about my lifestyle is that I travel around a lot, so I kind of live out of a backpack and a duffel bag. I don't have that much room to bring a monitor, a keyboard, uh, even external drives and stuff. There's just not a lot of room, especially when you, when you start to think about um, a head-mounted display um, and potentially even tracking devices and stuff. So this is what I traditionally travel with. It's just a, a keyboard and a laptop. And I was hoping that I could extend this and make it VR ready. But what I realized is that I didn't have enough USB 3 ports. So the official Oculus recommendations are an NVIDIA GTX 970 or better, Intel i5 or better, eight gigs of RAM or better, HDMI 1.3 video output, which this does not have, and then three USB 3.0 ports. So one of the uh, potential solutions here was the Bison box. It's an external graphics card box that runs off of Thunderbolt. And my laptop does have Thunderbolt, but again, the limited USB 3 ports, and it's $550 plus a graphics card. So then I kept exploring. I found the Razer Blade Stealth, which is a really cool small form factor laptop, lightweight, compact, definitely my style. You also need to buy the Razer Core, which is this box thing. Again, $500, not including the graphics card. And then you'd connect those two things, and I started thinking like, oh, do I need a monitor to, to run video out through the Razer cord uh, still? Or you know, am I gonna be able to do that directly with the HMD? I wasn't sure, and it was gonna cost a few thousand dollars, uh, and they were only taking pre-orders at the time. So I kept exploring. I found the VR Central area of Newegg, and they have a VR laptop section. I dug into that a little bit, and it seems like the only laptops at the time, uh, this is late March, 2016, with the MSI gaming laptops. So I settled on an MSI GT series, GT72S Dominator Pro G041, because it has a larger solid state drive. And while Oculus said that they were, you know, going to be addressing this issue of having to install games like in C on your primary hard drive, I just, I didn't want to end up with game files in that external drive and slow down and wondering how that would impact my VR experience. So I went for this one. The MSRP is $34.69, which is not cheap, but I did sort by price. I found an open box model, and that's what I've got. So this is the laptop, it's running. It came open box, but it actually included a backpack, a little keychain, and some of this other stuff. I was really freaked out because the fine print on Newegg says that they don't guarantee it's gonna have all the parts, including this power supply right here, okay? And this is, this is a pretty hefty power supply. Um, you know, it needs that extra power to be able to, you know, handle that graphics card, 11.8 amp output. So I called uh, MSI, asked them about this. They do sell those separately. So for 150 bucks, worst case scenario, I would still be able to have a laptop that would be <laughs> operable with the power. Okay, so here's the box that it came in. It's this big, you know, standard brown box. Then inside there's the MSI 29th anniversary. Just have a Steam controller here because Valve is awesome. I love Steam. I'm excited about all VR, but I'm just getting really excited for how I'm gonna interact with all this. The laptop backpack is awesome, but I wasn't sure that was gonna come, so I got this Urban Factory case. And uh, the crappy thing is it doesn't actually, it's not quite large enough to fit the laptop. So that's kind of a waste. I would recommend that you not buy that if you're going for a similar solution yourself. It just doesn't, it doesn't quite fit. And it's pretty solid around the edges. It's almost like reinforced heavy duty plastic or maybe even some metal in there. I did get the sealed package with all of the instructions, uh, the DVD manual, and I did go through and reinstall the drivers and even some of the software that was included because my audio was not working quite right. It was playing out of the laptop, but it wasn't playing when I plugged in headphones. Okay, so let's just run a couple tests here. I wanted to show you, uh, you know, whether this thing is compatible or not. I haven't used it with HMDs yet, but I ran the Oculus compatibility check. So that's what we're doing right now. It's just checking graphics card, operating system, USB ports. And it says, yep, yeah, congratulations, you're ready for Rift. So that's awesome, but it wasn't quite as reassuring as I was hoping, given that I've spent a ton of money. So I went ahead and got the Valve Steam VR performance test. So if we do that, let's hit play right now. In order to get this to work properly, I did sort of reinstall, factory reset the software, and then I downloaded the latest GeForce drivers. 
went down here to the system tray, right clicked, and then got the, the most recent software. You can hear the fans revving up a little bit. And there we go, okay, so it says right there, just into, barely into the ready mark, 6.2. I've run this before and I got 7.3, so I feel like there's maybe some optimization that could happen, some overclocking, but it's good enough for me. It's portable VR, and I'm excited to get out there. I hope that this helps someone else who might be considering you know, the purchase of one of these MSI laptops. They're pretty expensive, but again, hauling around a keyboard, a monitor, even a mouse and stuff, once you've got a VR headset and a 360 controller or maybe some of the a touch or, or the VR wands from Vive, it's, uh, it's going to be nice to have something compact like this.